and the one that the sun the one that the sun sets free is surely free indeed i'm excited i'm excited about these series of classes that we've had during the month of of, of march and april around this whole theme of uh, of setting your house in order um and we we, we do that but as uh, as children of god we are managers of everything that God has entrusted to us. Um, listen, um, God owns everything and does not owe us anything. And we don't own anything and owe God everything. So we are managers. We're called to be good stewards. Uh, advertising firms and big business, they're spending money because they see us as consumers. And that word consume just really means to use up. But we're called to be stewards of that which God has entrusted us. And he, he's called us children to live in abundance. And he has given us, he's given us the ability, he's given us his word. And the Bible is not a book of rules, but a book of principles. And principles designed have a purpose, and principles will yield a product. And if we utilize the principles that God's given us in this life manual, we can live the abundant life. And so what I'd like to have with us tonight as we continue this journey, um, because being, being believers is more than just being uh, in the church house. It's, it's a lifestyle, and it's really handling and managing properly everything that God has entrusted to us uh, so that there might be some time for uh, discussion and questions um, on the back end. Just let me um, do the announcements uh, uh, now, and uh, we have some wonderful presenters tonight. We want to give them all the time that they need to have. Uh, so we want to look at these announcements. Beloved, aren't we devastated to get word yesterday that Deacon Bobby Falk Jr. has gone on to be with the Lord? After church on Sunday, I went to the hospital to see Bobby. And there in the hospital room with him, and I got a chance to talk with his doctors and with his sisters and and the doctors said to us that it did not look good. Uh, but we know that there is an ultimate doctor. So, and we love Bobby and we love the Lord so we can trust, we can trust the Lord with Bobby. So let's pray for um, that family arrangements. Uh, in fact, I just got off the phone a minute ago with his sister uh, refrain, uh, in the process so just be just be in be in prayer. Uh, then on Thursday, beloved, and, and here, here's the tension that we live in. We 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 mourn, but we move. We we sympathize and we celebrate. I mean, this is this tension that we're called to live in. Uh, in, a, in the land of the dying, on our way to the land of the living. And um, we live in this tension that death knocks on, uh, on the doors and takes those in our families. And, but, but yet we can't hang out at the grave that we have to keep on moving. Uh, and so on Thursday, we, we, we're going to go forward. I, I was, I was, I was telling my wife that if something happened to me today, Beulah Church will have service on Sunday. What about preaching? If something happened to me, um, Beulah would have service on Sunday. And what about several preachers would preach the word? So, beloved, um, 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 we know not the day nor the hour. And Oh, if you're with somebody right now or talk to yourself, say, time out for foolishness. Oh, my God, if there's anything that's hanging loose, kneel it down. And 
any issues that need to be addressed, go on and address those issues in the name of Jesus. And uh, don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Oh, beloved. And we have to live and keep on going. Uh, and our lives are a testament to our Christ and to our loved ones with which we were blessed. And we were blessed with Bobby for On Thursday, um, our 3P service. Our Deaconess Ministry is in charge, and Deaconess Pam Watts is going to preside, and Reverend Theo Johnson uh, is going to be the preacher, and Deacon Seton McKenzie uh, is the group advisor. And then Thursday night, uh, Deaconess Donna Johnson, who leads the late night uh, uh, Thursday prayer call uh, on the call center line, let's be there. And then on Saturday, beloved, is um, Kids Church. At 12 noon, and Mr. Star County gives leadership to our kids' church ministry. And uh, uh, Minister Cheryl Kelly uh, are going to be presenters, and Mr. Jonathan McPhee. So glad to report that um, Jonathan is doing so much better. Uh, he's he feeling better now. He's going back to work tomorrow. Thank God for the healing hand that's upon Jonathan McPhee. Uh, Sunday afternoon at 3.30 p.m. installation for the new pastor at the New Progressive Baptist Church in Kingston, New York, where Dr. G. Uh, where Modelli Clark used to pastor. Uh, so I'll be giving that installation sermon uh, uh, Sunday afternoon at 3.30 uh, for the Reverend Charles McComb as the new pastor. Uh, and then uh, as we continue on uh, the setting our house in order uh, tonight. Uh, we have our presenters, uh, and then next week it'll be with Linwood Rose and, and Attorney Gilbert West, and then the following week will be Doug Vincent. Uh, Doug Vincent used to be a trustee, is a former fine member of our church who moved to Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, and, and, and Doug has spent his career. Uh, in Social Security, uh, he and then he has his own consultant business after he retired. So um, he's in the know, and he brings a lot of resources and he have this. So I'm just excited. Then after Doug uh, gives his presentation, I'm going to do a version on the truth about the tithe, the truth about tithing, and we've heard so much about it. You can uh, uh, go on and Google it. And you'll find all kinds of discussions on it, uh, but we're going to uh, do that. And then, beloved, the Central Hudson Association is celebrating 100 years. And so, um, the uh, and, and our church is the host. We'll be hosting the annual session in July. But as part of that 100th celebration is, a, is, a, is an anniversary gala banquet at the Grand Blue Hotel uh, on April the 29th. Um, uh, and please see Reverend Sarah Street McCray and be supportive as a host church. We would hope that a number of our members would buy tickets and support uh, that effort. You only get them to celebrate 100 years just once in your lifetime. So if you don't celebrate this 100 years, you probably won't celebrate the next one. So this is probably the only 100-year celebration that you get a chance to do. Or, and then Lamp, uh, uh, Malcolm O. Lincoln is the next speaker. All right, God bless your heart. As uh, Chris Como used to say when he would see him, let's get at it. We're delighted, beloved, to have tonight as our presenters, um, uh, Deaconess Clarissa Goins. Uh, she serves as vice president of a bank, and uh, our sister Lori Elton, who's a lending officer for the bank. So we're going to talk about the best of banking tonight. My God, you know, you know what an expert is. Uh, what people really see, who, who, how people determine an expert, they see an expert as somebody from someplace else. <laughs> how many know God has given us some experts right here in our midst? And so we we appreciate our own, and we got them right here in the house. You know, I believe some of the best people in the world are Beulites. My God, I just believe that. I'm convinced. 
some of the best people. I know for that, I know without a shadow of a doubt, that the best church in the whole wide world is sitting on the corner of Catherine Manchester Street in, in, in Poughkeepsie, New York. And God has blessed me to be the pastor. Oh, my God. Uh, how, can, uh, how God can let a not-so-good pastor be the pastor of the best church in the world. Amen. All right, so we got, come on, come on, view light experts. <laughs> Carissa and, and, uh, and Lord. So I'm going to move now. Sister B's going to come on because she's going to handle the PowerPoint. And she's good at clicking these buttons. All right. All right. Y'all got it, ladies. Thank you now. Thank you, Pastor B. Uh, good evening, everyone, our church family. I'm Clarissa Goins, and with me is Lori Elting. And we are grateful for this opportunity to present the best of banking to all of you tonight. A special thank you again to oh, Reverend okay. Jesse Bottoms for this opportunity. Right. Um, Sister B, could you move to slide two or? Thank you. So as you can see here, we're gonna go through some tips that we feel that consumers could use. Um, so how to secure your identity, identity theft protection services, protection from scams, top internet scams against seniors. Um, then we have some different scams identified, romance scam, grandparent scam, and then what if you are a victim of identity theft? Checking your credit report, and then developing a savings plan. Uh, slide three, please. So here you see on this slide, we're gonna begin with identifying what identity theft is. So identity theft is defined as uh, when someone uses another consumer's personal information, their name, their social security number, with the intent of conducting transactions to commit fraud. So how can you secure your identity? You need to be wary of shoulder surfers. What is a shoulder surfer? A shoulder surfer is someone, if you're going to the ATM and then they're standing real close. We don't have that as much now because of COVID and the social distancing, but there was a time where you could have two or three people waiting to use the ATM and then that person could be watching to see what code you're putting in. So that's what a shoulder surfer is. Don't use unfamiliar ATM machines. What do I mean by unfamiliar ATM machines? So we have our large banks that we're familiar with in the Hudson Valley. We have the Hudson Valley Credit Union. We have um, Chase. We have Rhinebeck Bank. Those are, those are familiar banks that we know of. But if you're traveling on the road or if you just stop in a convenience store and you need some cash, and there's a standalone ATM with a name on it that you've never heard of, just be a little leery about using those type of ATM machines because you could be putting yourself at risk. I would actually suggest that you do not use those ATMs um, because if you could um, potentially get scammed. Exactly. The next one on there is avoid, un I'm sorry, um, don't frequent unknown gas stations. So I did that one day driving to work. I thought I would be able to get to work with the gas that I had. And I stopped at a gas station that I normally do not stop at on the way to Millbrook. Put the gas in, had no issues. Within 18 hours, I got a call from my bank saying that they were seeing all these charges trying to come through that wasn't my usual type of transactions. So I was asked, do you have your debit card with you? And I said, yes. Um, I was asked, were you in the city the day before? And I said, no. Um, and then they even went through another series of questions. And then it was determined that, 
hey, I went to this gas station I never frequent before. And that probably my debit card was captured. And then the scammer was able to try to start making purchases with my debit card. So that's why we have on there, do not frequent unknown gas stations. Another way you can protect yourself from identity theft is to make sure that you shred unwanted receipts. If you get those pre-approvals for credits, shred those. Um, your account statements, don't just leave those around. And expired credit cards. Why expired credit cards? Well, sometimes you can make purchases online. They may not ask for the code on the card or the expiration date. So if you get a new card, your numbers may not change. It may still be the same numbers, but with a different expiration. So get rid of your expired cards. And then the last uh, tip on there is check credit report frequently, but we will discuss that in some later slides about checking the credit report frequently. So again, don't use unfamiliar ATM machines. Be wary of shoulder surfers. Don't frequent unknown gas stations and shred unwanted receipts, credit offers, um, get rid of your account statements. That's after you know the tax um, requirement and expired cards. Next slide, please. So identity theft protection services, Sister Lori is going to explain some of the services that are available to consumers. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay, so what we have is a program called LifeLock. Some of you may have heard of this program. Um, what LifeLock, LifeLock does is it protects your identity, alerts, and restores. They will alert you through email and your mobile device if they notice, notice any suspicion activity. They will help block hackers from stealing your personal information. If you become a victim of identity theft, one of the agents will work to fix it. And lastly, they will reimburse funds stolen due to identity theft up to, um, I'm sorry, up to your plan. And they have three different plans, options that you can choose from. The first plan is a standard plan and that plan is $9.99 a month. So $9.99 a month. The second plan is Advantage, and that plan is $19.99 a month. The fourth one is the Ultimate Plus, and that is $29.99 um, a month. Um, this is also another way of protecting your identity. Um, they will alert you. Um, you will get, again, like I said, you get text messages, emails. They would alert you if there's anything going on suspicious with your account. Next slide. So here on this slide, you see it says protection from scams. How can a person protect themselves from scams? So we have um, some bullets here on the slide. Do not give information over the phone unless you are certain with whom you are speaking with. Sometimes you will have someone who will pretend they're from a bank and they're asking you for some information. If that bank that's calling you is a bank you bank with, they have that information. So you should not have to provide them with that information. Case in point tonight, when sister, when I'm not gonna call her sister word. When Lori, <laughs> when Lori and I were, you know, getting together to discuss what we were gonna present tonight, I looked, I had an email from Hudson Valley Credit Union. So they were just alerting their customers of the same thing. If you get a phone call, there's a lot of scams that are going on right now. So if they're calling you and that is your bank, they have all that identifying information you would not have to give them that information. Another thing, do not carry your social security number or card with you. That's very dangerous. If someone gets your social security number, that's opening up where they can get all types of information and you can really um, put yourself in a situation where it'll be hard 
to recover from that. Emails, be careful with emails or clicking on links from people or businesses that you are not familiar with. Because by doing that, you can now potentially have a virus going through your device, whether it be your phone, um, your tablet, or your computer. Do not use an unsecured network when accessing personal information on the internet. So if you go to the coffee shop, if you go um, just somewhere where it says free internet, even at the hotel, if you stay at a hotel, free internet, do not go to any of the sites where you would have to put in identifying information, okay? Do not discard or mail or do not discard mail or prescription bottles with personal information listed on it. So, you know, if you take prescription medication, that label that's there, once you finish that medication, don't just toss it away, rip the label off. And they even have these little um, small little devices that you can um, run back and forth over the label so that no one would be able to read that information. What information is on there, you're thinking? Just my medication. No, it has um, your address on it. And it even has like insurance information on there. So you do not want to just discard those bottles when you're finished without removing the label. If you still use checks, some of us still do, have those checks delivered securely. You have to pay a little bit more, um, but it's worth that. It's worth paying that little bit extra instead of now having to deal with someone has um, defrauded your identity. Keep your personal information in a secure place at home, especially if you employ outside help or having work done in your house. So now that we're moving into the spring, sometimes we will have people come in our homes to do some work. So at the bank that I'm at, that I work for presently, there was a customer who had some work done in her home. She just had her mail sitting on her table, wasn't thinking anything of it. Um, and one of, one of the pieces of mail was some checks. So the workers that were in her home took some of her checks. So they went and they didn't take, you know, the first set of checks. They went somewhere in the middle, took some of her checks. She didn't notice because she didn't use these checks very often because again, many of us don't use checks as often as we used to. So she didn't notice. Six months down the line, there's these checks clearing from her account and she said she didn't write it. Well, clearly she didn't write it because the signatures did not match with the signatures that we had on file for her. But the thing is the way the checks were even written wasn't properly that person who stole those checks and wrote those checks did not know how to make out a check properly but the other bank cashed that check wow. so that was about four thousand dollars that was well our bank we ended up um you know covering her for that but that was four thousand dollars so something as simple as just leaving mail or checks out in the open when you're having work done in your home, you got to really think about that. There's scammers, you know, they're professionals. That's their job. That's their job. So, you know, you have your job, to, you know, honest job working nine to five. The scammers are always trying to stay one step ahead. So we you just have to do these certain things so that you can protect yourself and your family. And also another security two that you can have for your credit cards and or debit cards is to sign up for the alerts based on your transaction amount location merchant type or transaction type um, with my debit card as well as my credit cards there's alerts on my credit card so if i was to swipe my credit card within seconds i am getting a text messages a text message letting me know my credit card was used at what location and how much it was used for. That is a very, very handy tool. And if you don't have that, please sign up for that. Um, you can also set your spending limits um, as well. 
Um, you can block your, if you lose your phone, your credit card, I'm sorry, you use, if you lose your credit card or your debit card, you can block that card right from your smartphone. You can report it stolen from your smartphone. Um, just safeguard your phone. Your, oh, I keep saying phone, excuse me, everyone. Just safeguard your card from fraud. So again, I just urge you guys to set up the alerts. Um, you can have it come on your cell phone. Like I said, every time I use my credit card or my debit card, I get an alert right away mm -hmm. um, that that card was used. And I always check to make sure it was me because sometimes I, will, I won't notice it right away. Um, then I would double check to see. So that's another thing that I would urge you guys to do. Um, slide six, please. So believe it or not, there are some scams that are targeted towards seniors. So COVID-19, you know, we, Lord knows we all know about that, um, COVID-19, but because of that, because of what we went through in the last couple of years, there are even some scams that are targeting um, for COVID-19 cures, antibody tests, um, that's really prevalent. So fraudsters are still at work creating scams perpetuating virus-related fear. Yes, the, um, we have the vaccines out, we have the boosters, but still there are fraudsters out there trying to continue perpetuating fear amongst those um, that they can. So just be careful about clicking on anything that's um, COVID-19 related, unless you know for sure it's um, from the Center for Disease Control and Prevention or World Health Organization. Just be careful about that. Disaster relief scams. So we know what we are seeing, those images on the news for Ukraine and what's going on with the war with Russia. Um, not saying that all of those that we see or hear about as far as disaster relief is a scam, but just make sure you do your homework before you start um, giving funds for these disaster relief. You know, just have to um, do your research, okay? Phishing scams. So phishing means that someone is trying to find out if that is a valid account. Lori, can you talk some more about phishing scams? Okay, yes. <laughs> So the customer or the potential or the customer that's trying to get the um, information, they may call the bank um, or send an email. That's the most popular one. Mm -hmm. They will send an email pretending to be that person and request information. Um, and depending on who they get, like if they get a maybe a teller that is new to the bank or um, someone that's really not paying attention, they will email information that they shouldn't. Like if someone, I had someone call me today and he asked me for, can I send him his personal tax returns? Why would he be calling me to send him his tax returns? He should already have his tax returns. Um, I did not respond back to him. Um, I've also received emails from customers asking for their social security number. We at the bank will never give um, out someone's social security number. Um, we will ask them to come into the bank um, so that we can ID them and make sure you are who you say you are. Um, but there's all types of um, scams out there currently. Um, and we just got to be mindful, be, be very cautious before you give out any of your information. I have customers or had customers that will give out their personal information and then call me and say, oh my God, I just did something I shouldn't have done. Well, what did you do? 
I just gave out my account number, my social security mm-hmm. number. I'm like, okay, you got to come into the bank right away. We have to shut down the account. We have to do fraud alert. Um, it's just, it's a lot of work on your end um, to correct all of that. So again, just be careful with the information that you give out. I, I'm saying, hold on to your personal information. The other um, scams that we have um, is romance scam. Um, Please advance the slide. Oh, sorry. So this is also very, very popular. Um, When it happens, I'm really shocked at this happening because I didn't think that anyone would fall for that. Um, But what it is, is they, you would have someone, it, it can be online dating. And what they would do is they will contact the man or, or the woman. And it's usually via um, email or text. And what they would do is just gain their affection. And then what they would do is start asking the um, person on the other end for money mm-hmm. under false pretenses. Mm-hmm. Um, I had an incident where um, a person, she said it was her boyfriend. He said that he was away and he was trying to get back home and he needed some money. She asked him how much money he needed and he needed like $4,000. She sent this money to this guy. Then he said he got detained at the airport and needed some more cash. So she sent that money to him as well. Well, when we finally realized what was going on, we called her into the bank and she said that she was sending this money to her boyfriend, trying to get him to come back home. And we asked her, how did you meet him? She said that it was an online, she has not met him, but he's trying to come home so that they can get married. Well, that was not the case. The guy took her money. When she tried to call him, that phone number was no no longer valid. So he had like maybe a burner phone or just a prepaid phone that he used while he was in contact with her. And once we got onto the scam, he got rid of the phone. Um, So again, it made her account go negative. Um, So when her paycheck hit the account, it ate up her paycheck. So she had nothing Mm -hmm. after we tried to clear up her account, which actually her paycheck did not clear up her account. So what she did was she stopped her payroll from going into her um, checking account and her account went to collections. So again, just, I know some people are lonely and they're just looking for some companion, Mm -hmm. but there are people out here that is, they're just trying to scam you and get your money. So that's another one people need to be careful of. Um, next slide, please. Okay, the next scam is the grandparents um, scam. This is another very, very popular scam. And I would suggest um, for you guys to talk to you know, your mom's grandparents, um, to make them aware of this scam because it is happening right in our own neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And what is happening is the person will call you and pretend to be your grandchild. And they, when you pick up the phone, they will say, hey, grandma, it's me. And then the grandparent will be like, oh, it's this and say their name. And that person would say, yes, it's me. I'm in trouble. Can you send me some money? But please don't tell my mom or my dad. And guess what? That grandma or that grandfather is coming to that bank, pulling the money out and sending that money. Um, I've had it happen to several of um, my customers and it happened close to somebody very close to me. Um, They called... um, the person that's very close to me and pretend to be my one of my sons. Um, 
but that person that didn't recognize the voice and kept saying, well, how come this doesn't sound like Tariq? Um, and he kept saying, grandma, it's me, it's me, I'm in trouble, I'm in the hospital, send me some money. And then another person gets on the phone and, and claimed that he was the police and that please send, send this money or he was going to jail. Mm -hmm. um, good thing that person did not do that and they hung up the phone. Um, then gave me a call and asked if Tariq was okay. And Tariq was actually working, I believe, at that time. So it's be careful. And mm -hmm. I've had a customer that the same thing happened to, and she would not tell us why she was pulling this money out of her account. Um, and we would not let her leave. We talked to her till she finally said that her grandson called and he was in trouble. And we informed her that that was a scam, that um, her, that probably was not her grandson. And she was like, no, and he told me not to tell, call my mm -hmm. daughter. So, mm -hmm. and the older people, they get scared and they just follow suit with what they're asking for over the phone and they send that money. So just please educate our grandparents, um, moms, dads, to let them know what to look for. Um, um, call that grandchild, call your daughter, call your son and make sure that your grandchild was okay. Do not send that money. Like Lori said, I even experienced that myself. Um, someone was pretending to be my daughter. Um, fortunately enough, my mother-in-law is, is very, she's very quick. <laughs> so she knew that wasn't um, my daughter. But the same thing, this, that scam is so prevalent now, whereby, like Lori said, Grandparents will do anything for their grandchildren, um, even when it really doesn't make sense. When you when you're hearing a voice on the phone that could be a child, and if that child sounds like they're in trouble, or if they say you know something, and it could trigger a response for that adult to help out that child. So just be careful. And if you have ever been a victim um, or one who was scammed, don't be ashamed. Just let someone know, go to your bank, tell um, loved ones, and then you can get that taken care of. But don't feel that you've done something bad because you wanted to help out. Next slide, please. So what if you become a victim of identity theft? What can you do? Well, there's a couple of things that you need to do. Number one, you need to put a fraud alert on your credit report and contact all three credit bureaus. All three, I'm saying that again, all three credit bureaus. So you have um, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. Why do you need to contact all three? Because they all report differently. So you may have um, one institution that uses one of the bureaus and then maybe um, your credit card company may use some of the other bureaus. Um, I know my bank in particular, right now we only report, if someone gets a loan with us, we're only reporting that to one bureau, but we're now looking to, to start reporting to all three bureaus just because of what I just explained. They all report differently. And then you gotta contact your financial institution like Lori was stating earlier, you gotta let your financial institution put an alert on your account saying that you were victim of identity theft. That way they will start looking at transactions that are coming through your account and maybe you know contact you say, hey, did you write this check? Hey, did you use your card here? So those are a couple of things that you want to do. That's, yeah, it's a lot of work, a lot of legwork, but you gotta look at the end. In the end, it'll help you. And consider a role in identity theft protection services, like Lori had um, talked about earlier, uh, the LifeLock. Think about enrolling in, yes, there is a fee associated with that, but sometimes we can't think about that upfront fee. We got to think about the back end. So you may have to pay a little bit upfront, but it'll save you a lot in the back end. So statistics, there's 33% of citizens in the U.S. have experienced identity theft. 
And so the Federal Trade Commission handled 2.2 million fraud reports in 2020. So that wasn't that long ago, two years ago. 1 million child identity theft incidents occurred in 2020. That's another thing. If you have a young child, check their um, credit report. They shouldn't have a credit report, but they do have social security. So you want to make sure no one has been using their social security number to obtain credit. Okay, that's very important. And every year, 15 million Americans become victims of identity theft. So if you haven't personally been a victim of identity theft, I'm pretty sure you probably know someone who has been a victim of identity theft. So that's another thing. You, number one, if you are a victim, report it to all three bureaus. Let your financial institution know and consider enrolling in identity theft protection service. Back in 2016, approximately 26 million US residents were victims of identity theft. And the majority of the identity theft victims had their bank account or credit card information fraudulently used. Like Pastor B mentioned in the beginning, I work at a bank and I'm in charge of what's called risk management. So under that risk management umbrella is fraud, um, check fraud, credit card fraud. We see a lot of check fraud right now. Um, and yes, not everybody's using checks like they used to, but the few people that are using checks we're seeing is, is a heightened number of check fraud. So you just got to do everything you can to protect yourself so that you won't have any issues in the long run. Yes. And again, like I said, don't ever give out your personal information over the phone. Um, you know, there's other scams where people will call you and say they're the IRS and they will ask you for money and to send it um, Western Union. Well, we all know the IRS is not going to contact you via phone and telling you to wire the money um, Western Union. You're going to get a certified mail from them. Um, so, again, be cautious with that. Um, releasing information or your hard earned money. Right. Um, let me see, I thought it was one other one. And as Lori was saying about the IRS, um, that was really, oh, we, I say probably about four or five years ago, that's when it was really something big yes. around this time, because we know that this is tax season. Um, and those calls can be very intimidating, very threatening. And if they know that you're afraid, or if they know, you know, that they maybe they got someone that they can get some money from, they're going to keep on calling. Yes. So the IRS will not call you first. Like Lori said, they will send a certified letter and then, you know, follow up that way. Yes. So if you get a threatening phone call, you know, just um, try to dismiss it. Don't follow through. Don't even engage with that person on the other line. And just, just hang no, up. Hang up. Just hang, hang up. up because they're, they're asking you for your credit card, debit mm -hmm. card number. Just hang up because right. the IRS will never call you for that information. Exactly. Okay. All right. So this slide is talking about your credit score. Now we all know your credit score is very, very important. Without these numbers, um, you will never be able to get a good job, um, an apartment, um, a car, house. So this number, three digit number, you have to work hard, keep that number up high pay all your bills on time. Um, there's different programs out here. Um, we have like mint.com. And what that does that is it's also another free um, application you can download on your phone, um, your smartphone, your tablet, your computer. It's free. It gathers all your financial information in one place. 
You can add your accounts, credit cards, and bills. See what you have and what you owe. Track your spending patterns, investment. Mint also creates budgets that you can stick to and you can see how you're spending your money. You also can get a free credit score. It alerts about upcoming um, bills and for unusual um, and for unusual account changes or charges, they will contact you. Um, they automatically update your information in real time. It's safe. I have that also on my phone and I check that a lot. Um, as well as Credit Comma. Credit Comma is basically the same thing as Mint. Um, it does the budgeting, it alerts you. What they also do um, is when you're paying, when you be paying your bills on time, your paying um, habits, um, they will suggest card, credit cards to you. Um, what I would suggest if you're trying to like pay down, um, say a credit card with a high balance, sometimes they will offer you a credit card with zero finance. What I would suggest is that you take that money, you, you apply for that card and you transfer that balance over to that new card that is gonna give you zero financing for a limited time. That will help you pay that credit card off earlier. And it will boost up your credit score as well. I love Credit Karma. I was introduced to Credit Karma by Lori quite a few years ago. And what I love about Credit Karma is it'll give you your scores from two of the credit bureaus. So scores are important. That's why we have them listed here on this slide. Um, what's considered excellent um, all the way down to what is not a good score at all. You know, it, it's hard to obtain a good score, but it's easy for your score to go down quickly. So late payments can cause it to go down um, quickly. Even if you are at the maximum amount for your credit limit. So say you don't pay your bills late, but you have a bunch of credit cards or, or it's, um, and you're up to the maximum limit on all those credit cards. Like I said, you don't pay them late, but you're up to the max. That could cause your score to go down. So, and your score, like Lori said, has an impact on everything from your job to insurance, maybe the insurance rates you pay to the rate you're gonna pay for that car you want, um, to your home. So that's one thing you have to check your score um, periodically. Most um, recently, like within the last couple of months, I had, I checked my score and then Credit Karma was saying, okay, your score has gone down. I was like, what, what happened here? <laughs> Been working hard. Right. And then I looked, one of my creditors, I had been paying my credit card payment. Well, that had been misapplied for three months. For three months. I had no idea because um, there's got a lot going on in my life right now. So I had no idea it wasn't being applied properly. So then they weren't going to tell me that. I called and I said, hey, what's going on? And and the, oh, we've had problems with our computer system. And now we see that we've misapplied your payments these last three months. So then I had to say to them, well, what are you gonna do? I you need to contact the credit bureau because you didn't have no problem contacting them thinking that I wasn't paying on time. You need to contact them and let them know that you made an error. And that is the responsibility of that creditor to do that. So if you ever find that something is not um, credited properly, maybe you are paying on a loan and you are paying extra principal. Be, be, believe me, it's best to open your mouth and say to them, hey, something's not right here because in the long run, it can impact you. So long story short, I got them to correct it. I got a letter stating this, we see that there was an error in reporting on your credit report, so now I'm good. But that taught me, who is in banking, I gotta you know, track stuff a little more closely my own self to make sure 
that everything is being reported properly. And I will say from personal experience, I have used, well, had a, a credit card and I was offered a 0% for 18 months. I transferred that balance from the old card to the new card and my credit score jumped up several points from doing that. Um, and yes, it did help me pay that credit card off much earlier because I wasn't paying any interest on the money. So it does work. Um, and if what I would say to you is if you have credit karma or um, what's the other one? Credit karma or mint, I'm sorry, then um, they will give you options of different cards where you have outstanding percentage rate of getting. I would strongly mm -hmm. look at that. Um, and I have used credit karma and mint for that reason as well. And I got the credit card and I paid it off because I got zero financing. Um, mm -hmm. Also, every year you should pull a free credit report on yourself. It will not give you this credit score, but it will give you anything that has hit your credit, um, whether somebody applied for a car or a credit card that you didn't know, it will show up on this credit report. Um, so I would give you, I'm gonna give you the um, website to go to, and that is annualcreditreport.com. Again, that website is annualcreditreport.com. And what you would do is you would um, click on request for free credit report. And this credit report will, get, will not give you a credit score again, but it will give you information and you will get to choose from Experian, TransUnion, and Equifax. Um, so that's very good, helpful to do. You do get one free every year. Anything you wanna to add to that? That, you know, the free credit report that you get each year won't ding, and what I mean by ding, it won't hurt your score. Okay, so um, it's very important that you check. If you haven't applied for any credit within the year, at least look and pull your credit report just to make sure that everything that is on there is accurate. It is all credit that you have applied for or that you currently have. Um, you don't want to have any surprises if you're trying to make a major purchase, you know, a, a home or even um, trying to get a car. You don't want any surprises. You want to know, you want to walk into that dealership, you want to walk into that bank, um, that finance place and to know, okay, my score is this or I know where I'm at, um, that's the worst feeling when you're going somewhere trying to make a major purchase and then hearing something else that you weren't aware of. So we have to be informed um, and stay informed and even let your family and friends know about information that you're learning um, about pulling your credit at least annually. Yes, and also credit comma and um, meant if your credit score was to go up a couple of points or decrease a couple of points, they will also send you an alert mm -hmm. letting you know. So if you didn't do anything to cause it to go down, you would then be able to research, all right, what happened? What made my credit score go down? Mm -hmm. They will alert you with any of that. So again, I strongly urge you, it's, and ask each of you to do yourself a favor and um, sign up for Mint or Credit Comma. If not both. Yeah, I have all three. <laughs> all right, next slide, please. All right, so savings plan. All right, so we have a couple of savings so what I'm going to say is we need to set ourselves up for financial success. Start small, open up a separate savings account, and you can start with whatever you can afford to um, take out of each paycheck. Um, I would 
suggest to maybe if you have it auto debit out of your paycheck, that way you would you won't miss it mm -hmm. and just have it transfer into um, a savings account. Um, today, today the online um, savings account earn a higher interest rate than what you would get in any local bank or credit union. Um, and there's two online um, savings account that I have. And one is Capital One 360. That savings account have an interest rate of 0. 0.40. There is no minimum balance and it is FDIC insured. No fees. Um, and what you would do is just transfer money from your checking account or savings account that you have locally and it will go right into your new savings account so that you would have to just link up your savings or your checking account. Um, there is also the Marcus by Goldman Sachs savings account and that interest rate is currently 0.50. And again, that minimum balance is a dollar to open. So when I went back to pull up the current rates for the banks and the credit unions here in Dutchess County, I picked a few Chase, their um, percentage rate on their savings account is 0 0.01. Hudson Valley Credit Union is 0 0.02. Bank of America is 0 0.01. Rhinebeck Bank, 0 0.05. And TD, TD Bank is 0 0.05. So again, you, I just gave you two savings account um, companies that have um, an awesome rate. And I am a customer of both. And I have, have it where it just transfers from my checking account on a weekly basis into my new, my checking, my savings account. Um, and for me, it works because it's out of sight, out of mind. I can't easily just go to the local bank and pull money out. So it works for me. Um, so because it works for me, I want to just share that with you guys. I know I have a couple of people that has also signed up for this. Um, it's an awesome thing. What else we got? Let's see. Give me one minute. Before we go to the challenge, um, I just want to also talk about our accounts that we have at the bank and how we have the accounts titled. Um, what I would say is that you have someone that you trust, a family member, um, and you can either do one or two things because not everybody can afford to get a trust. This is another easy way around with to have, to, would be to have someone as a joint owner on your account or you can have them as payable on death. Mm. Um, the difference between the two is joint, either owner have access to the money. Mm -hmm. um, the money belongs to both owners. They can withdraw and deposit money. If you were to get sick or even hospitalized, they would be able to pay your bills, move money around, or whatever you need done with your um, account. The payable on death is a beneficiary. So what they would do is if something was to happen to you, um, if you were to pass away, all they would have to do is come to the bank with their ID and the death certificate, and they would be able to liquidate that account. They, they don't have to go to the courts to fight to get that money. That money belongs to the person that that account is in trust for. Um, so again, all you would need to do is um, present the bank with um, the certificate, um, death certificate and your ID. Um, power of attorney is another one. Um, and that person is called an agent mm -hmm. and they can make decisions if you become sick or injured. Mm -hmm. Only appoint someone you really trust. Avoid appointing someone who mismanage their own money. Mm. And the power of attorney can be revoked at any time by you. 
However, the power of attorney do becomes void at the time of death. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. Mm -hmm. um, they will come to the bank um, to pull money out after the person is deceased. Mm -hmm. The power of attorney is no longer valid at that point. So um, that's another misunderstanding that people have with power of attorneys. Um, and last, before we go into the challenge is, um, there are some programs out there for first time home buyers. Um, this new program launched back in 2019 and is by the Federal Home Loan Bank. Um, this program is, um, it provides financial support and it's from grants. And it, you can get this grant up to $10,000 and this is um, towards the purchase of your home. Um, this is for New York State. This program is a first come first serve basis. Funds are available on a limited time each year, or it may change. Um, and there is some household income um, limits. Um, and I did just jot a few down. I'm not gonna go through all, but for family size of one, the max, um, income you can have is $65,350. For a family of two is $74,700. Family of three is $84,000. And a family of five is $93,350. Um, and what they define as a first time home buyer is that you had no ownership and principal during the first three years, um, ending on the date of the purchase of the new home. Um, a single parent who has, um, I'm sorry, a single parent who has only owned with a former spouse while married. So if you um, are now single divorce, you can now try um, apply for this first home buyers um, program. Um, an individual who is displaced, I'm sorry, an individual who is a displaced homemaker and has only owned with their spouse um, is defined as a first time home buyer. The minimum household income is at least $30,000. Okay. Oh. Oh, I had it, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, also, I would say when um, moving on, just please make sure you check your monthly statements. Um, you get that, some of us may get it on our phones or you get in mail um, statements, wherever that, you know, however you get that, please check your statements. Um, make sure all the transactions on your statement is what you have purchased or you wrote that check for. Um, if there's anything on that statement that you did not do, notify your bank immediately and let them know. And then what they will do is they will research that, um, that transaction and they will credit your account back. But there is a time, it is time sensitive. So if you wait, three months or so and you want and you come to the bank and say you did not make this transaction you already passed the time frame where you can dispute that transaction so that's why I suggest that you please monthly sometimes me personally I check my account in the morning when I get up and I also check my account at night before I go to bed just to make sure there's nothing on that account that I did not do. I just want to highlight one thing that Lori um, mentioned about having how the account is titled. Um, and she mentioned joint accounts. And then she mentioned also, um, I forgot what, what was something else that you said. But it made me think about if you have an account or you have accounts at different places and you may not be married, Please, please don't have anything happen to you without someone knowing 
where your money is at. And I'm saying that because at my bank, every year I have to submit to New York State money that people have forgotten about. Mm. Um, and that's what we, we call dormant accounts, um, a sheet to New York State. So it could be anywhere from 50,000 to 20,000, um, I mean, $50 to 20,000. And once that money is remitted to New York State, then it's a little harder to get it back. So sometimes um, people of color, we don't want everybody to know our business. And we may say, okay, I have accounts here, but nobody needs to know that. Yes, somebody does need to know that. You work very hard for your money and for your investments and your retirement. You don't want anything to happen and that New York State gets that money because maybe a loved one or someone you really can trust doesn't know that you have funds here or there. Now, I'm not saying to give it or let someone who's irresponsible know that, but you got to let someone know because oftentimes you, you just won't even believe the amount of money that it's not just at my bank. I'm pretty sure Lori's bank as well, that they remit to New York State money that people have forgotten about or they didn't know that those accounts existed. So just keep that in mind as well. If you're not joint on an account with someone, just make sure you, when you're getting your affairs in order that someone knows I have an account to your XYZ bank. I have, um, you know, a trust over here. Someone needs to know that information. As well as if you have safe deposit boxes mm -hmm. at the bank, someone needs to know that, or maybe even add someone to that box because if something happens to you, they cannot get into that box. Exactly. And most people keep important documentation in there. So it's a good idea to add someone to your safe deposit box. Oh, we we'll get the questions later. Yeah, we'll get it right now because I'm sure he'll ask. Okay, next slide. Okay. So the last thing we have is the 52 week money challenge. It's a savings um, plan that it starts off very easy in the beginning and then towards the end, it gets very challenging. So I am just putting this out there to anyone that is looking to try this. Um, I tried it a couple of times. I will say not every time I succeeded um, because I needed the money, but one time I got very close. So I'm gonna say, maybe we can have some fun with this and we all challenge and encourage one another to um, take on this 52 week money challenge. Um, I don't know how we can get this to everyone. So I guess you can put in the chat who would be, a, you know, who is interested in this 52 week um, challenge and we will get this paperwork to you. Now, that is the end of our um, section. So any, okay, all right. So we'll we go see to some things flashing up. Yes. Uh, we haven't been able to really um, see everything that's been flashing up in the chat. All right, so I guess, are we gonna get? So I guess if someone's interested in the 52 week challenge, um, I'm in the church building um, or my husband's in the church building so we can make sure that those sheets are printed and it'll yes. be available yes. um, on the table that's right in the hallway outside of the church office. Yes. Yep. I think there's some names coming in there. Okay, that's it. it. Yes, if we have your fax number, I can do it tomorrow at work. I, or we can email, because I, I have it, I can email people. Oh, oh yeah, so Sister B has it. And so if anyone's interested, if you don't want to um, wait till Sunday, then um, it could be emailed. Amen, amen. There are some, several questions came up. My God, what, what, a, what a presentation, what a presentation. 
several questions. Thank you, uh, Risa. Thank you, Lori. Several questions came up. Uh, Charlene asked, how do you set up those alerts on your charge card? Okay. Um, if, she, if she has um, an app to her credit card, she can do it that way. Um, I don't know how, because I do everything online. So I went through my app and set up my alerts. So if she go online to her credit card, there's going to be a section there for alert. And then, TEG. okay. All right. So then if you're going into TEG's um, website and then click um, credit card, there's going to be a section there that says alert. So click on that, and then you can set up all different kinds, um, types of alert. All right. Charlotte also said that uh, uh, we should not be, don't think that the scams cannot happen to you. That's exactly um, right. Let's see, Regina and Richardson asked about, what about Publishers Clearinghouse winners when they call you on the telephone telling you that you are a winner? Oh, let's see. That's know. a fraud. Oh. I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's I, not a fraud. <laughs> yes, I don't believe. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not a, a candidate for that. I don't believe in it. That's a scam. Okay. Yes. It's thank you. Okay. Now, Leo, 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 Leo raised the question: uh, If you only use cash, will your credit score go down? Mm, that's, that's a good one. Um, that is a good question because basically your credit score is on how you pay in your bills. Yeah, so yeah, if yeah. you don't mm -hmm. have any debt that you're paying, um, yeah. The advice I've heard in the past is, um, charge a little bit on a card or something like that, just so that it can, like Lori said, they can see how your payment history is. Yes. You don't have to charge a lot, just charge a little bit and you can pay it off. Right. Um, so that they want to yeah. see some kind of payment history mm -hmm. um, when they pull your credit. Right. So mm -hmm. it could affect the credit score, yes. It's if you've never paid by charge, yes. D, D Parker asks, why does your credit score dip when you close an account? Because you have less available like spending power. So if you, and when you close an account, try not to close your oldest account. So if you have a, um, a card for 15 years and then you have a card that you've only had for maybe six months, try not to close that card that you've had for 15 years because that's established credit. Right. And then if you do close an account now, say if you have all together with cards, um, 15,000 in spending power. And so now you've closed an account. And so you have only 10,000 in spending power, but maybe in that 10,000 spending power, now you have um, a higher um, maximum amount on one card. So then that can impact you Your overall. Credit score, yeah. So you have to be very careful. It's whatever goals you have in mind. If you are looking to make a big purchase, you don't want to be closing any accounts. Right. Especially if you're trying to buy a house or a car, they don't want to pull your credit score or pull your credit report and see you close an account. Mike, Mike Crime says this is great information. And that's a real compliment come from him because he has a whole lot of money. Uh, this is, uh, <laughs> And Ann Roberts, Ann Roberts asked, what, what was the name of that second bank again? Lori, I think that you gave us, gave two recommended. Um, uh, Marcus. Okay. The Marcus by Goldman Sachs savings account. She asked, what's the name? And can you, can you unmute? Yes, that, that was question. Can you say that it was, again? I was writing it down. The Marcus by Goldman Sachs. S A C H S savings. Okay, and those are both of these were online savings yes, accounts. They, yes, they are. The Marcus by Goldman Sachs. Thank you so much. No problem. Leola, Leola asks, what about a doable uh, power of attorney? Uh, you can respond to that and 
uh, Attorney Gil West will be on next week, and maybe that's mm -hmm. something he can talk about also. But either you want to respond to that? Um, the durable, I mean, it's the same thing as what I was talking about. Um, again, that once that person is deceased, that power of attorney is void. Um, also with power of attorneys, and this was something I learned a couple of years ago that you have to be careful with the power of attorneys because I had a customer that was a power of attorney for her parents and she was sued. Mm -hmm. So if the, if the parents were being sued, they're now they're no longer with us, they're gonna come after the power of attorney. So be very careful with that. Um, I'm not really a big fan of power of attorneys, to be honest with you, because you can get um, caught up with that. Eugenia asked, how long should you freeze your credit after, after identity theft? Hmm. I thought it was like seven years. It, yeah, I think it is it's seven years. Um, yeah. I, think it's a, I think it's seven years. That's something I can look up. Yeah, but I believe it's and if you want years. it longer, then you would have to reapply for it to freeze it, right? But it is seven years, I think it is. Maybe okay, we're gonna look that up because we're not sure exactly if it is seven. All right, okay, these were the questions that I saw in the chat. Uh, does anyone else have a question that was not in the chat that you'd like to ask? If you would unmute yourself and ask your ask your question. I don't think, I don't think there's anything. Is there anyone? Has a a question. Okay, please identify, question. please identify yourself, please. This is, this is Sharon Knight. Um, I've learned to just have a couple of credit cards. Um, the one I paid off constantly, and then they sent me a letter stating not, not to ask for more. And it seemed like it hurt me because I was paying the bill off constantly. Okay, I'm not following you. So you pay, so what you're saying is you get the bill monthly and you pay it back down. I, I will pay it off quickly, quickly. You pay it off. And what did they quickly. send you a letter? They Same. sent me a letter saying that, that um, if I wanted to increase my credit, they wouldn't do it. Not that wow. I asked to increase it, but it seemed like they were offended because I kept paying it off. Well, yeah, they mm -hmm. do get, because that's not <laughs> what they want. They right. want us in debt. So they do get upset <laughs> with the consumers that pay their credit cards off monthly because they're not making any money off right of so they don't okay. want you because right they're right. not making yeah, any not money making off any money. you they want the ones that is charging and charging and just making minimum um balances or minimum payments they want you to pay but they don't want you to pay it off like you know the way you're doing it okay All anyone, right. else, anyone else any other any other questions is Hudson Valley, does Hudson Valley have the same programs that uh, TEG has as far as a uh, uh, credit alert and fraud alert and life lock and things like that? Uh, sir, yes, they should have okay. that as well, yes. If you have a credit card with them or a debit card mm -hmm. and you go on their um, website, um, you should be able to set up alerts. Most have banks a, have that. I have a question. Go ahead, uh, this is Virginia. Um, I wanted to know is with the first time home buyers, like I inherited a house and I just got it changed in my name, but I never really bought a house. Would I still be able to, as a first time buyer, can I take advantage of that? You have the house in your name currently? I just changed it over from the estate of into my name because I wasn't getting credit for paying the interest off since 2004. Mm. And I just had it changed to my name. And I mean, so, I mean, technically I didn't buy the house. You know, it was, I inherited it. 
I would have to look into that, being that it's now already transferred into your, because when we look at it on paper, you're now the homeowner. Mm -hmm. So it's after the fact, but I could, I can look into that. I will check with my um, mortgage department. And if you give me your email address, I can email you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. I'm putting it now. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes, uh, Pastor, I have a question. Reverend Knight, go right ahead, sir. Yeah, uh, Laurie, you mentioned that um, uh, there was a, a way of setting up your account at the bank so that if you passed, uh, you could designate someone else that would be able to come in with the paperwork and the death certificate. Yes. Uh, uh, how would you set that up? Just go into the bank and and have it done? Yes. So you would just go into the bank and just say that you would like to add a beneficiary okay. to your account. They're going to probably ask for the name, um, address. And if you have their social, that would be helpful. But if mm -hmm. not, that's fine. Right. Oh, okay. I have all that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Pastor, what was that question um, about the initial fraud alert? Uh, the, the, I think it was seven years. Seven years. I just looked up in my book. And if you are a victim of identity theft, you need to place a 90-day initial fraud alert on your credit report. And that'll let creditors know that they must take reasonable steps to verify that you are that person who's applying for credit. And then you can place a seven year extended fraud alert on. So that's in my booklet. Okay. Amen. I think that was for Eugenia. Yes. Who it was. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Any other, any other, any other, I other, other, other questions? More. I got one more. Okay. Laura, you were saying, were you saying mint, M I N T dot com? Yes. Or? Okay. M I N T. Men. Thank you. All right. Great uh, information, and, ladies. Okay. Well, and real quick, the the men <laughs> charges a fee uh, to to do the budget management, but Credit Karma does not. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, just just to confirm what um, Sister Lori was saying about the um, Marcus Goldman, um, I am one of the people, we are one of the people who have gotten that account and it is wonderful. And I just want to thank her for that. I think you told me about that account probably about four or five years ago, I think, at, at least. And it's a, it's a wonderful gift. And especially since the interest rate is much higher than the banks, I love it. <laughs> you know, Lori, Lori teaches that uh, in the biblical principles of financial management as a part of our numerous orientation uh, program that comes uh, from uh, our 13 uh, lessons in numerous orientation. Uh, or any other questions? Well, yes, you... I just want to add one other thing, and that's for anyone with small children, grandchildren, um, start them early with saving um, so that these kids understand that mm -hmm. money don't grow on trees. Um, mm -hmm. Get them to come into the bank and do the transactions themselves. Um, I think in the long run, that will benefit the child. Uh, last week, week before last, Lori, I was talking about um, Proverbs 22, Six, train up a child and where she go and where oil will not depart from that. That's yes. twenty two six. Mm -hmm. The next verse, verse seven says, "The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is the servant of the lender." So teach your children biblical principles of financial management. Teach your children that money does grow on trees. And mm -hmm. and Lord, we're in the process of trying to put something together to do this for our children to jumpstart them. So our children could come out of this thing a lot better uh, than than we are. Any other yeah. questions? Um, That's good. Let's see. 
Diggers Lothary, are you are, are you on? I think I saw you. Uh, uh, Digging Rouse, I saw you line yes. up. Did you have a yes. question? Go ahead, Digging Rouse. A question about us when we go to restaurants with our credit cards. Sometimes we hand, uh, you know, in the book, we hand our credit card and they go away. We have to be careful. Sometimes they'll take pictures of your card or take the information and bring your, you know, your card back to you. And you have to be on the alert later to find out that someone from the restaurant that you actually gave the card to scammed you. Yes, that's correct. But you also got to be um, careful of that even in the stores because they have their cell phones at the register. Mm -hmm. So we have to be careful, keep our cards in our hands. Um, don't hand it to them because their cell phones is right there. All they have to do is snap a picture of it. And like Reese said, all you have to do is do online shopping and use that card number and they'll wipe you out in minutes. Also be careful because they have cameras and eyeglasses. Yeah. Are there any other questions? The, good evening. The, the, the question with the inherited house, um, I did that with Tyvon and tried to get her in order to um, turn the uh, mortgage into her name. And as a, she couldn't get the first time home on a um, 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 line of money or whatever credit it is. Because the grant? She, the yeah, grant. Because, because she inherited the house. I heard uh -huh. you were asking that question earlier. So they wanna let her get all the benefits of the first time buyer because she inherited the house at that point. And so all that all that, that she could have get, she couldn't get at wow. that point. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. I'll, I will still double check just, um, just to make sure, cause I know from bank to bank is different. So I will look into that. Okay. That was Mid Hudson. Miss Hudson Valley Credit Union. So okay, yeah. All right. I'll just double check that. All right then. Amen. Amen. I am absolutely delighted at this presentation tonight. Thank you, Clarissa Gorn. Thank you, Lori Elton, for this wonderful, wonderful presentation. I am excited and blessed by the information. I'm not surprised because I know these two fine young ladies and and how able they are uh, at what they do. Um, a, a lot of stuff that I did not know. I really learned a lot tonight and some things that you kind of take for granted. I've been really sensitized and this is some great, great uh, information. Amen. Dignes Lothary, are you on? Yes, I am, Pastor. Okay, could you just say a word and, and thank our presenters for uh, our Director of Christian Education to thank uh, our presenters tonight and uh, worried about what we're trying to do. Would you do that, please? Yes, sir. Thank God for both of you for such an awesome, awesome interpretation and information to all of us because everyone in this world today, each and every one of us are facing some financial situations and we really need to know how to do them properly so that we don't get caught up in things that we shouldn't be caught up in. And the information that you were given tonight was very, very informative, extremely informative. As you were talking about the different things, we thank God for you. We ask God to continue to bless and keep you. And I know that uh, as pastor has indicated and Sister B has indicated, if there are any further questions and information that we all have, uh, that we can actually get that information to you. And we're so grateful that you've already volunteered to respond and get information to us on different issues. So we just thank God for this, that this is really, really important for us to know this so that once we are doing all of these things, we can also do the tithing that goes with it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Risa, would you, and Lori, if you put your emails in the chat, if anyone wants to uh, uh, to uh, get in touch with uh, Risa or Lori. Uh, and again, thank you, thank you so much. Be with us next week when our own minister, Reverend, uh, our Reverend Lawyer, uh, Gil West, will talk about some legal aspects. And uh, Brother Linwood Rose will talk about uh, final expenses and how we approach that. Then the following week, um, uh, Doug Vince is going to talk about Social Security, the Social Security, and again, thank you so much. 
So we're gonna close out tonight. And since we've been talking about finances tonight, uh, maybe somebody with a whole lot of money should give a closing prayer tonight. And um, and see, uh, you know, Reverend Theo Johnson, uh, he 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 became a part owner of UPS. Then he retired. And he's got a whole lot of money, so he's going to give us. A, I want somebody with a whole lot of money to give us a closing prayer tonight. So let's uh, let's. let's uh, Reverend Theo, are you here? I'm here. <laughs> Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we just thank you, O oh God, that you have all kinds of resources for us to gain and grow and just do your, so we can do your kingdom work, O oh God. We thank you for these two presenters, O oh God, the knowledge that they have shared with us tonight that we might be better stewards of what you have given us, O oh God. We thank you, O oh God, for just continue to bless us with this information, O oh God. We thank you for Pastor B and Miss B, O oh God, how they share the information with us, oh God. We thank you, oh God, that with this information, we will use it and we come better, oh God, that we might serve your kingdom as you would have us to do. Continue to bless us, oh God, as we continue to praise and glorify you. We thank you, oh God, for all that you're doing for us and with us, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, gang. Thank you. Again, Risa, Lori, thank you much. Thank all of you for being a part of this study tonight. Excellent job.